Hearts Around the World is the theme for the 2003 Florence Heart Ball. We'll take you behind the scenes coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at BB&T. We're focused on the 2003 Florence Heart Ball to be held at the Country Club of South Carolina on February 15th. And we're visiting with Pete Mazzaroni, the Manager of Community Affairs with Roche Carolina. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Nice, nice to be here. Appreciate the invitation. Helping to highlight some of the sponsors that have really helped make this year's Heart Ball a big success. Right. Couldn't think of anyone better than bringing you in from Roche Carolina. And Talk about some of the activities at Roche and also sure. activities going on with other community fairs here in the PD. Okay, great. Can we talk real quick about yourself? Are you originally from the area? Uh, no, I'm not, Greg. Actually, I'm from New Jersey. Came down here eight years ago in January. Mm. So I'm, I'm almost a Florentine now, they tell me. I came down here with my family, my wife and two children. I have a son, Peter, who's 16, and he's over at West Lawrence High School. And I have Nicholas, who's age 10, and he's over at Carver Elementary School. And we just love it down here. It's a great, great community, and we're, we're so glad to be part of this community. Had you lived most of your life in New Jersey? Pretty much. We moved from New York to New Jersey when I was very, very young. So I, in essence, grew up in New Jersey, went to school in New Jersey, and was the first Mazzaroni to move out of New Jersey. <laughs> so we were brave, and we made the move down here. Your wife wasn't a southern girl who was trying to bring you down? No, she wasn't. No, she's a Jersey girl. Wow. Well, that's a big transition. It, it sure is. Uh, and it took a while to get used to, but now... As she says, you couldn't drag her out. So oh, we love it down here, and I love it down here. It's just a, it's a great, great place to be. That's exciting. Had you been with Roche prior to arriving here at Roche, Carolina? I was. I was up um, in New Jersey with Roche, with Givadon, which is their flavor and fragrance affiliate. Uh, and they transferred me down here uh, in 1995. But I've been with Roche altogether going on 12 years. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about Roche? You know, what? Uh, I think growing up, I grew up in the Triangle, and uh, there's there's some big pharmaceutical companies based up in that area. Is Roche associated with Hoffman La Roche? Uh, we are actually um, Roche Holdings, a parent company, Hoffman La Roche, the U.S. affiliate. We are a major healthcare company um, specializing in pharmaceutical products, as well as we are the world's largest uh, manufacturer of diagnostic equipment. So those are our two main segments. Uh, our third business is the vitamins and fine chemical business. Uh, but the biggest part of our business is in pharmaceuticals. Uh, our international headquarters is in Basel, Switzerland, so we are Swiss-based. We're over a 100-year-old company, uh, and the U.S. headquarters is in Nutley, New Jersey, and that's where the administration manufacturing sales primarily come out of. Uh, Roche Carolina, uh, we are part of the, that Roche group, and what we do is we develop the manufacturing processes compounds that come into our portfolio. These are new drugs that may be discovered somewhere um, where they're developed in very small quantities. And what our scientists do is figure out how to scale them up um, so that we can then bring them into bulk manufacturing to make large scale for clinical trials and then eventually, hopefully, for commercial production. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we do out there is we do the commercial manufacturing, that's the large scale bulk manufacturing of pharmaceutical active ingredients. Mm. That's basically the active ingredient. We don't make the final pill or the final injectable. We make the active ingredient, which is typically a, a powder form, mm -hmm. which will then ship out to one of our other locations where they do the final dosage formulation. So you've got a lot of scientists working in that huge facility out there. So we have a lot of very smart people out there, a lot of very well-educated people. Uh, in fact, 17% um, of our uh, staff out there has advanced degrees, PhDs, and uh, master's degrees. About 55% of our workforce has um, bachelor level degrees. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. When we think about uh, some of the pharmaceuticals that Roche may be popular for, can you give the viewers a sense of, or maybe some names that they would be familiar with, or maybe not? Well, we have so many therapeutical areas that we're involved in. Probably one of our, our most, most popular and probably one of our oldest, really, which got Roche started, was um, a product called Valium. Um, since then, though, we've had numerous um, drugs or uh, pharmaceuticals that are out on the market. Um, some of the newer ones we're working on, we've got some, some AIDS products. Um, some more that you may have heard of recently, Tamiflu, which is a, a flu product. Um, Right here locally, we're making a product called Zalota, and actually that was developed here, and we are the sole manufacturer for this product 
that's sold around the world in 70 countries, and the bulk active ingredient uh, is made right here in Florence, South Carolina. I love it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And, and that, and by the way, that's a cancer product, oncology. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you said that's sold in 70 countries. Around right? the world. That's amazing. Right here in Florence, South Carolina. When made. did uh, Roach Carolina begin construction of the plant here in, in, in the PD area? We broke ground in 1992 uh, as part of our strategy. Uh, we bought 1,400 acres of land out on, on the east side of, of Florence. Uh, broke ground in 1992. We had our laboratory buildings first became operational around 1995, and our main manufacturing building, what we call our launch manufacturing building, became operational in 1998. So it's, it's been work in progress, many, many years, um, many, many man hours, and a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Pete, I want, back in October, we were uh, out at the Florence County Fairgrounds for, uh, for a taping we did uh, and got Don Harriet in, who mm -hmm. I believe is the CEO out at Ro for Roche Carolina, right. who's also heading up the South Carolina State uh, Chamber of Commerce. And I was about to ask you the next question. I remember how amazing it was because you see this gigantic facility as you're coming in on 76 and you look to the right, and I think he said it's the tallest building in Florence County. That's correct. When you think about that, you think this mammoth facility must have thousands of employees in there, and I, I think I asked him the question, it totally caught me off guard, how many folks are actually working within the compound? That, that's common. People see that large um, facility out there. We've got over 10 buildings, and of course, we've got all that land. Um, but interestingly enough, we run that plant with about 300 employees. It's amazing. And, and that's really because of the investment we made in the technology, that if we didn't have that level of automation and technology, it would probably take about three times the number of people to, to do what we do out there. Well, that is amazing. And how many square feet actually are there? Do you know of, of, of space? In manufacturing is about 350,000 square feet of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, in our pilot plant facility, that is about 180,000 square feet. Then we have about 80,000 square feet of laboratory space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the rest is administration, warehousing, and support. Okay, and most of your most of the employees or most of the associates out there at Roach Carolina would be from the PD. I know you said 70, 17 percent had PhDs, uh, a big chunk uh, with, with bachelor degrees. Are most of those folks from around the area? We probably have about a 50-50 mix where we we hired a lot locally um, in our in our process areas, our technical areas, our, our mechanical areas that provide support. Um, a good group of people, particularly when we first came down here, we did relocate um, a lot of families so that we can really hit the ground running with the things we needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, we do recruit nationally for a lot of our positions where, where we require a lot of experience or a high levels of education. We do recruit uh, nationally, um, but we do a fair bit of hiring locally as well. Mm -hmm. And how does Roche go about recruiting employees locally? Uh, we have um, advertisements in local newspapers, radio. Uh, most recently, we had a job fair when we were looking to ha fill our latest technician class, um, which is a program where we bring people uh, in. We pay them for part. Of, we pay them while they're working with us, and part of the time they're in class, part of the time they're actually out in the field. It's like an apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. It's a six-month program. Um, our most recent class we held, uh, we had a job fair. We had over 1,600 people apply. We brought in about 800 people, and we finally whittled that, whittled that down to a class of, I believe, about 20 people. And the majority of them, if not all of them, were, were locals. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Can we talk real quick about your, uh, obviously we'll get over the Heart Association in a second, and the Heart Ball, forgive me, I'm just so fascinated by Rose Carolina here. Can we talk real quick about your responsibilities as Manager of Community Affairs? Okay. Um, there are several areas that I am responsible, but, but overall I'm responsible for ensuring that we're doing the things we need to do to, to be a good corporate citizen. Now, when we came down here, we want to be part of this community. It's a long-term thing. It's an investment for us. And we want to make sure that we're, we're well-received, and which we have been for the last uh, eight years we've been here, uh, but just to make sure we're doing the things we need to do to really be responsible citizens of this community. And that's primarily uh, my function, to make sure that we're involved, that we're engaged, uh, whether it's health-related issues, whether it's um, public relations, education, Whatever, whatever the case may be, um, that's primarily my responsibility in community affairs. Right, great. Can we talk about some of the uh, legislative agenda or other pieces that are on your, some of the uh, bullet points that are on your uh, agenda going forward? Okay. Um, from a legislative standpoint, and, and not to make this a forum for our, for our leg legislative issues, um, but that is very, very important to us. Um, this is a 
great state to do business in, and we want to see that it stays that way again because we want to be here for the long term, as well as do what we need to do to help and attract other um, businesses and economic development to the area. Um, so there's several areas that we, we're looking at and we, we work in and we stay in touch with. Uh, one, er one area primarily, though, is education. Mm -hmm. and, and we think there are some things that could be done to reform our education system and change our education system. And I know you've talked to Don about that in the past and, and will again in the future. Um, but from a legislative standpoint, we see there could be some good reform that can really create a legislative system or an education system that brings us the type of employees that will bring in a wealth to the the area and to the state um, that we think that the potential is here for. Absolutely, and that's so important to the PD, obviously all parts of the state, but the PD in particular, right. we've got such strong community college system, Maury Georgetown Tech, Florence Darlington Tech, Sumter, the strength throughout this area is amazing, right. and to think about growing that, I, I think Don and, and maybe Roche in general, but probably Don in particular, had highlighted uh, the school foundation right. when he was on, and Trip uh, DeBard came in to talk about it. It was amazing hearing about some of the things going on. That's a very novel approach. Right, right. Don Don has a passion for education and, and, and reforming the public school system. Uh, he's worked on the Governor's Task Force for Workforce Education, the Palmetto Institute, and, and other such initiatives to really try and improve the education system and really just the wealth of our area down here. And you'll be hearing more about that um, as, as we work more and more with the legislature in terms of trying to get that reform and, and really do what we need to do for education in the state. Mm. Pete, how about some of the programs that Roche supports locally? Uh, obviously, you all are active with the American Heart Association. Are there other community uh, groups that you're heavily supporting? There are um, several areas that we are involved in, the American Heart Association being one. Um, another area we're involved in is the American Cancer Society, mm -hmm. and, and with oncology being one of our primary therapeutical areas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, in fact, chairing, co-chairing the Relay for Life this year. We've been involved for several years with Relay for Life, and that's one of the events where all of our employees get together and they come out and they show support. Uh, for the American Cancer Society. Um, we also were pay setters for the United Way. The United Way obviously helps so many agencies in the area. Um, our employees do a wonderful job at opening up their wallets and pockets to support the United Way. Uh, then there are some others that we get involved in. Uh, we have employees out there that, that take great pride in being good citizens of their community and helping support. Um, Christmas, Christmas in April is one where we have probably 25% of our workforce takes time um, on their Saturday to go out and help some people in need. Um, so there are just there are numerous things we get involved in. And Roche supports its employees in working within the community? We do. Uh, they volunteer and we encourage them. We help support them. We actually have some internal programs that kind of facilitate that support. Um, one of the programs we have is our LD Barney volunteer where if you serve on a board or if you put in a certain amount of hours with a, a volunteer-type agency, we c we'll make a contribution um, in that person's name for helping out that. Um, when these people, uh, when our employees take time out from the workday, we let them go from the workday and um, just help out in, in the community. So we really support that, and it's important to them. It's important to us. Mm -hmm. I know you talked about one of Roche's primary um, oncology is a very important aspect, and you all are, are helping to provide the vehicle to make oncology a more um, livable uh, profession. I mean, helping them out dramatically. What about uh, do y'all do y'all produce any pharmaceuticals that that are aptly focused on the heart association or on uh, uh, cardiovascular disease or strokes? And, and, and you know, the one area I, I really can't speak of as an expert is all the different products oh, we I have. Bet. Um, I bet. We, we do have so many, but I do know we have some products uh, that are in that area in the area of heart disease. Mm. How about why, why you think the Heart Association would be one of the primary vehicles that Roche would support locally? Well, I think one reason is because heart disease hits so close to home here in the PD. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, we've all seen the facts about heart disease being the, the number one um, killer around here and, and so high in the PD as well. And I, I think it's number maybe the oh, number one absolutely. On cause of death in the PD area. So, so again, I guess it's just natural for us being a health care company and being concerned uh, that we get involved in helping support the Heart Association and the things they do to help fight heart disease, to promote education about heart disease, uh, and really you know, sponsor research and really get involved. And again, because it's so local and it hits here right at home. Pete, is there any accomplishment over the past year, over the last 12 months, of which you're most proud 
Greg, it's, it's hard to put my finger on one because there are just so many things that were involved in that, and they're, and they're all so good. Um, it, if I were to, I don't know that I could put it on one particular event, but maybe just one particular cultural thing is the fact that, that our employees really look to get engaged. Um, I get phone calls all the time from employees saying, hey, you know, how do I get involved in this? I really want to be involved in this, this heart walk, for example. Um, last year, for the first time, we were involved in the heart walk. And that was because we had an employee come up and say, you know, I want to kind of lead a team. Uh, and in fact, that person got a team together, and we, we want to reward in our category for the amount of money that we raised with, with that team of people. Um, that's the one thing I could say we're really proud of is, is the fact that our employees just, I mean, they volunteer themselves, and they call me and say, how do I get involved in this? I want to be part of this. Mm. A really good feeling. Pete Mazzaroni, the manager of community affairs for Roche Carolina, one of this year's sponsors for the 2003 Florence Hart Ball. Pete, thanks so much for being with us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina people coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're at BB&T. We're focused on the 2003 Florence Heart Ball to be held on February 15th at the Country Club of South Carolina. And we're visiting with Mary Torgerson, the area director for the American Heart Association Mid-Atlantic Affiliate. Good morning, Mary. Good Thanks morning. so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Incredible all week to highlight uh, the upcoming Heart Ball, to think about so much that's gone into it, having had some of the volunteers in this week as well as having Candy in to talk, give some amazing facts and figures about cardiovascular disease and stroke, not only in the PD, but throughout the state, throughout the nation. We've had some doctors in and some of your sponsors, Carolina's Hospital System and other sponsors all week. Tomorrow we'll have some folks in. It uh, should be really exciting. And thanks for giving us the opportunity to help spotlight this year's Heart Bowl. Can we talk real quick about yourself? Are you originally from the area? Yes, I am, Greg. I was born in King Street and was raised in South Carolina. Stayed here all of my life till I went off to school. Do you have family here in the area, Mary? I do. I have uh, brothers and my mother still here in the community. When did you become the area director for the Mid-Atlantic Affiliate here? I just came on board in June of this past year. Mm -hmm. Right around the time, I guess it was back a, a few months back when we were promoting the Heart Walk, yes, the PD was. Area Heart Walk. We were out at Carolina's Hospital System. I think you had just been on a few months right, at that point. Right, exactly. Yes. Very exciting. What prompted you to get active with the American Heart Association? Well, I've always had fundraising in my heart and uh, just saw this as a wonderful opportunity. It is a national organization, and I just knew that support would be even better than what I had had with local situations that weren't nationally supported. Mm -hmm. And what had you been doing before joining the American Heart Association? I worked for House of Hope, which is a local homeless shelter here for women and children. I was director of development there and uh, just built that wonderful facility and got it up and running. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You pointed out the American Heart Association is a national organization. Oftentimes when folks think about contributing to national organizations, they're worried that their funds head out of town and they never see them again. They're not reinvested in the community. I don't think that's the case with the Heart Association. Can you talk right. about how some of the funds are spent when, when folks either buy tickets for the Heart Ball or they buy corporate sponsorships to help uh, really get the word out about fighting heart disease and strokes. Where, where, where do those funds stay? Okay. Well, I'm real excited, Greg, because I, I'm like that as well. I want to know that what I'm doing is affecting where I live. And so we are very proud this year to, to uh, actually have in print the research dollars that have come back into the state of South Carolina. We're fortunate that we have three universities that do research here, and that's the Medical University of South Carolina, the University of South Carolina, and Clemson University. And all three of those facilities have been awarded major dollars this year for grant research. Mm. And it's much more money than actually we contribute on a national level that's coming back into South Carolina. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I think we heard Dr. Smith early in the week talk about, uh, even for the PD almost in particular, 
that for every dollar that's donated, more than a dollar comes back to the PD right. because there's such a prevalence of mm -hmm. strokes and cardiovascular disease. Yes. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It is. You really know what, when you're donating the Heart Association that it's, mm -hmm. it's coming back to benefit yeah. your community. And we like to say at the Heart Association, even if the money weren't coming back into South Carolina, if any research development comes about that saves one person, mm -hmm. it can affect the whole United States of America. I mean, wherever that research is being done, if it's an answer, it'll help people in Lawrence, South Carolina. Absolutely. Let's talk about this year's heart ball. It's okay. getting close, a little more than two weeks out. Are there any differences in this year's heart ball compared to the last uh, eight heart balls in the PD area? Absolutely. Uh, we've made several changes this year that I believe are going to be very positive. Dr. Smith, of course, is a wonderful chairman, and he has brought so many new and creative ideas to the table. We have moved our location. We're moving to the Country Club of South Carolina. One of the things that we heard people say was that they wanted to be able to sit, to have a place to put their belongings or sit while they ate. Mm -hmm. And so we had to move to the Country Club of South Carolina in order to accommodate our crowd. Mm -hmm. We moved it back to February 15th. It had been later in the year, but being Heart Month, everybody can relate to Heart Ball and Heart Month, and mm -hmm. so we thought that was good. Um, this year we're also honoring the memory of Ashby Larimore, who was the person here at BB&T that everybody in this community knew and loved. Ashby was such a, a, a wonderful citizen. He was a model citizen and he did die of a heart attack and so we're honoring his memory and his family will be present at the ball this year. So those are just some of the changes that we've made. That's wonderful. Mary, is there a theme for this year's Heart Ball? Yes, there is. It's called Hearts Around the World and we've got billboards up in Florence. I hope you see some. And it's just a beautiful logo, and uh, so we're going to have all the different countries captured in our theme this year. Great, great. Can you give the viewers a sense of some of the activities on the program? Uh, if, if someone, I, I don't know if you all yet still have any tickets out there, but if someone wanted to have the opportunity to buy a ticket or get a corporate sponsorship, what would they be looking uh, if they attended the Heart Ball this year? Okay, corporate sponsors, that's something else that we're doing a little bit different this year too as far as uh, an extra incentive for them. We normally had a preview kind of for them before the ball, but it made for a very long night. Mm -hmm. And so we are not having that preview party for the corporate sponsors this year. We're doing that on a separate occasion. Uh, it'll probably be sometime in March, and we're going to call that our celebration luncheon. And so that will also be a time where the corporate sponsors can network on a little smaller basis in a quiet environment so they can really get to know the other sponsors and that kind of stuff. But, yes, we do still have some opportunities for sponsorship. And, of course, they'll have the premier seating at the ball, and we'll have their name on signs in the ball and also in the auction brochure. And uh, so those are just some of the advantages that they get. Uh, we do have some general tickets left. I'm Real excited, and I really believe this ball is going to sell out. And uh, so we don't have a whole lot of general seating tickets left, but we do have a few. If someone wanted to buy tickets or knew of somebody who could possibly get a corporate sponsorship, who would they want to call, Mary? They could call my office or myself. I'd love to talk with them. Uh, but anybody in our office could help them. And that number? 665-0985. 843-665-0985. How about... Uh, the musical performers that evening and what's on the menu? Okay, we have a band coming called Fantasy and uh, they have been on cruise ships and so they're used to a, a crowd of different ages and different types of music mm -hmm. and we're very excited. We've heard some of their music and we believe they'll be great performers. Uh, on the menu that night we're going to have some really, we're having different food stations throughout the location of the building. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing that I want to highlight is we're going to have a martini bar and that's going to be down under in Australia which will be a downstairs bar, and we're kind of excited about that. And uh, we're going to be having some veal and, of course, shrimp and chicken, and we're going to have a, a mushroom walk station that I hear is just fabulous and just lots of different good things to eat. Spectacular. I can't yeah. wait. What about, uh, will you all be having an auction this year? Yes, we will. We'll have an auction, a silent auction uh, and a live auction. And we've just heard today, matter of fact, that one of our live auction items will be uh, for four guests to go and meet with our new governor in his office and have lunch. Is that right? So we'll right? be auctioning off that opportunity. Well, that should be uh, get a lot of bidding. Yes, I hope so. That should get a lot of bidding. Are there still any opportunities for any viewers or otherwise to donate items for the... Yes, there certainly are. Uh, we haven't gone to print quite yet with our auction brochure, so there would still be time for them to, to donate a wonderful item and have some good publicity for them. And was it, uh, obviously Ashby Larimore, as you said, was such a, a great community leader and died of a heart attack. 
any other particular reasons why he was selected uh, as the as being recognized at the Heart Ball this year? Well, you know, when you think about, I like to think about the biggest heart, you know, mm -hmm. and of course Ashby Larimore comes to mind because, like I say, he influenced so many positive things in Florence on every level. He was mm -hmm. just very active in our community and such a, a model citizen. Mm -hmm. Mary, who's worked with you this year in helping to organize uh, the 2003 Florence Heart Ball? Well, Dr. Smith, of course, like I said, is our, our leader and uh, has just brought creativity and new opportunities to the table. Uh, Joan Bilheimer, of course, from here at BB&T is a wonderful community citizen as well, and she's doing a great job of sponsorship. Uh, Jill Blaker is in charge of logistics, and Nick Townsend is in charge of our decorations, and, you know, just lots of wonderful volunteers have put a lot of work and effort into this opportunity. And you stress that word, volunteers. Yes. It's amazing, the commitment of volunteers throughout mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, if, and, and lastly, again, if, if someone wanted to possibly, I know you, you're expected to be sold out, we're right at two weeks from the event, someone possibly wanted to buy tickets or if there were still some sponsorships uh, opportunities, they'd want to contact you, Mary Torgerson. That's right. 843-665-0985. That's right. Okay, great. Yeah. We're visiting with Mary Torgerson. You'll see her at the Florence Harp Ball this year at the Country Club of South Carolina. You call in and get tickets if you don't already have them. Get out and support the, the community. The funds come back to this area and could help save the life of someone you love. Mary, thanks so much for being with us You're this great. morning. Thank you. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. all the sponsors and volunteers for making the 2003 Florence Heart Ball and today's Carolina people such a great success. If you haven't yet bought tickets, contact the American Heart Association at 843-665-0985.